make copious notes about tonight. Uh, my first one. <laughs> so we, got, we got through three of them. We got through three of them, which is uh, fucking great. There's a whole heap. Set, don't swear, don't swear. Okay. Uh, thanks for coming out at 11.30 on Tuesday night. It uh, means a lot to us, and um, it's good to see you all here. Uh, these little parts where I'm going to be talking, um, I made uh, copious notes uh, about what I'll be saying during these parts. Um, just anecdotes and stories from you know, a life of, uh, of comedy. Uh, and I left those notes at home uh, in, <laughs> in Sydney. Uh, uh, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, having a home in Sydney, because I know you fucking hate that here. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to keep the swearing down to a minimum, hopefully. Uh, I've failed that so far. And we're just going to basically do songs tonight, so I hope you can enjoy that. Um, I, I will say that um, I've always needed help with songs. I have no, uh, I have no musical ability. I was raised in a family that no one played any instruments, and uh, I didn't know anything about music until I joined the All Stars, and we just had a natural aptitude to sort of put songs together. It was great fun, but none of us really knew what we were doing. Um, and uh, you know, 25 years later, I haven't learned a damn thing. So I have these boys here to help me out, which is fantastic, and they're, they're good. It's been fun. Uh, I will tell you one uh, little anecdote um, about how, I suppose, naive we were in the All-Stars uh, when we got together. Um, we did an album called Icon, the first song, Bottle, uh, about alcoholic you know, addiction was taken from that uh, uh, album. And, um, yeah, it, it had only just been the three of us, uh, one guitar, piano occasionally with Tim and, uh, and singer. And uh, when we made the album, we got a couple of friends of ours, uh, Phil Wales was one, and a couple of other boys uh, to come and help. And uh, uh, one day Richard told uh, Tim and myself to go away because he wanted to, to jam because the boys uh, he was working with had said there was this marvellous thing that musicians do called jamming. <laughs> <laughs> so he, <laughs> he thought he'd give it a, a crack so he told us to, to get away. Uh, so we went off and had a bit of lunch and stuff and we got back and he was so excited and she was just over the moon because he jammed with real musicians for the first time this summer. <laughs> uh, and he said, it's amazing, we've just come up, we've come up with this instrumental, it's just, fuck, you should hear it, it's, it's just incredible, just come listen. So he listened to it and he said, isn't that incredible? He said, you know, we could, we could, um, it's such a good instrumental, we could have, we could have an instrumental with words. <laughs> And I rather cruelly said at the time, yeah, a song. <laughs> it hadn't quite occurred to him that that would be the next. Anyway, <laughs> speaking of songs, we should probably crank into another one, because uh, we haven't got that much time. So. Now, this one was uh, penned with Mr. Moriarty. Bleach bones and twine, mud thickly blue. 
together to darken skies with you and I. We have nothing. Salt as pepper, black as white, intrigue as boredom as day as night with you and I. We have nothing. so much male pubic hair, because it was a male toilet. Uh, yeah, pretty song. Then I talk and it's fucked up. Uh, always been the problem. Um, and this toilet, I couldn't believe it, that people would, anyway. Uh, it was like a beard around the, it was like the toilet had a beard of pubic hair. And because it was a male toilet, you know, it was like other fillers. And you wondered how on earth could people tolerate just going in there and just dropping their pubic hair. Like all different shades of fucking pu anyway. <laughs> I first worked in this place in '87, I think. I don't know if many of you people were alive back then. Uh, when it was in Glasgow uh, at the Mayfest, um, and once again with the All Stars, and uh, uh, there was uh, there was about this many people there that night. Uh, no one no one knew us. So uh, 40 years later, you know, fuck, it's about the same, hasn't it? Really? <laughs> But, oh, I love you for being here. And um, uh, when we arrived, everyone, would, they were just arseholes to us when we did the sound check. They had these bouncers standing in the room that were the fellas that bounced for um, U2 the night before at these massive stadiums. And, and now they were, you know, bouncing for the Spiegel tent in the middle of Red Square in the middle of Glasgow. And uh, it wasn't like the setup you see now. It was much more sort of barren. And out the back on this bitterly cold... Uh, May night, even though that's spring in Glasgow, uh, they had these two demountables um, where, where the performers uh, left all their belongings and so on and they could, and got changed. Um, and uh, a, a tiny room, probably as large as this stage, low ceiling, and in that room were two of these man monster bouncers, the big fucking human beings, like gigantic human beings. And they wouldn't leave when uh, Richard, Tim, and myself got changed. Um, just in case someone came and fucking stabbed us. 
and that was a very awkward thing. And was, we were probably paler than them and from Australia, which was like an anomaly and unbelievable. And, uh, and they just stood there, just watching us. This row, it was fucking weird. Uh, the night turned out well. At the end of it, the bouncers who'd hated us became our, our best friends. They kept buying us shots and hugging us to their enormous bouncer breasts and, and making us feel incredibly loved. And at one point, the biggest of the bouncers, the, the guy that organised them, um, who we, had, we hadn't understood a word he'd been saying all night, we'd just been laughing. Uh, you know, that really thick uh, Glaswegian sort of accent, you can't fucking understand it. And I don't think these were, you know, the intelligentsia of Glasgow either. Um, <laughs> And uh, so he's just going, no, 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 I should have put it in a fire. <laughs> you know, drink, because he's got big fists, right? And then uh, and we, we're doing that. And then at one point, out of all this sort of miasma of words, we, we clearly hear, Celtic are united. And it was posed as a question. And he said it about 10 times, Celtic are united. Celtic are united. And we thought we had a 50-50 chance of staying alive. <laughs> at that point, and uh, I said, Celtic, friends for fucking life, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for clapping, you're the only one. So this song is for you. <laughs>
baptism time, pretend we're from Hillsong. It'll be crazy. And then, okay, I'll do this song. Seventies, early eighties, uh, in my opinion, green rooms are you know where you where you hang out uh, 
as a performer or crew before and after the shows. We still don't know why they're called green rooms. Apparently, a lot of conjecture about that. I don't, I don't know the reason. Um, does anyone know the Space Cowboy? Yeah. Yeah, probably not enough to tell that anecdote, so I'll fuck it off. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was a great green room. Like, if I, you know, fuck it, it was a cool game, wasn't it? <laughs> Should we do one from, uh, actually this was on a, uh, a record I think this one, wasn't it, uh, yeah, it was, um, I've got to be honest with you, most of these songs, and the way these songs were put together is uh, about two days before the TV show, um, whether it was uh, Good News Weekend or um, uh, Good News Week or uh, Sideshow, it'd be like, oh we have three and a half minutes to fill. <laughs> Have you got anything? And I think, oh, well, this, maybe this song would do, or this one. And then we'd, uh, we'd try and work it up. So we'd have a day trying to sort of basically write the song. And then there would be, the second day would be working with the band. Um, and when I say days, maybe an hour or two. <laughs> uh, and then on the night, um, because we basically uh, shoot most of the shows like live television, you would very rarely got a second chance to, uh, to do it again. So they were basically, you know, um, uh, you know genies out of the bottle, bang, gone. And, um, and never revisited them. Uh, and many of them, I, I, I'm not a, a very good bookkeeper. I don't, um, I don't have a good filing system. Uh, I've lost so many things in my life. Uh, so many things, I can't even remember most of the things I've lost. So, um, thank you, thank you. Thank you for being there, sir, that was nice. Um, but, uh, uh, so, so uh, about, I think it was about a year ago, two years ago, I said to Ted Robinson, who's produced almost everything I've been in, and the only person has probably any faith in me in the entire universe. Um, uh, thank you, okay, let's turn it. Forming an army. Um, and and uh, he said he, he wanted to get all these songs together. And I thought, that's a, that's a great idea. Anyway, um, about a, you know, two years passed, and uh, nothing had been done, and, and finally we talked about doing this show, and. Um, and so uh, we had to get the songs because I didn't know what they were, couldn't remember them. Um, <laughs> and if it wasn't for YouTube, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> so this is one that was actually performed only once and recorded once, uh, like most of the others. <laughs> Yeah. 
I'd love doing that show. Um, I, I don't think the songs are that crash hot. In the end, which could be why it's dead now. You were amazing. I know I was amazing. Fuck, that goes without saying, right? Um, I will tell you one story that I've never actually told as an anecdote before. It does take a bit of time, so I'll try and move through it quickly by speaking really quickly. Uh, anyway, uh, I did that show with Marina Pryor, who's a gorgeous woman and an absolute sensational. Um, and uh, um, anyway, mm, it's weird. I don't know if this is a good story to tell. Uh, it shows a side of me that you may not uh, like. <laughs> Just tell her. I can tell her. Why, why not? I, tell, I should tell her. Anyway, um, so we're up at the... Is it the Princess Theatre? Top of the... Anyway, on spring, yeah. Um, and downstairs, there's these two rooms that, are, that Marina was in one, I was in the other, because we were the fucking stars, right? <laughs> and there's a little uh, lane, uh, alleyway between them. And um, and I don't know if you know the fellow Paul Stanley from Kiss. Have you ever heard of Kiss, the band? Yeah. Kiss, seminal sort of 70s makeup band. Um, but, you know, uh, being a 12-year-old, I fucking love Kiss. Uh, anyway, Paul Stanley. Um, was invited by the producers to come and see this version because they thought my, my particular performance was so good that he should copy it for the New York version. Um, so this was a great fucking honour for me, right? Um, uh, and I was a bit tentative. And the stage manager was so keen. He came to the and said, did you know St Paul Stanley's in the audience? He wants to come backstage, uh, you know, uh, at, the, at the end of the show. Can I bring him backstage? And just because he was so needy, I said no. <laughs> Absolutely broke this fellow's heart. He uh, acquiesced and said, "Just for you, I'm going to do it, but I'm not happy about it." Um, anyway, uh, Marina and I had a bit of a chat uh, in the break about how awesome it was, and she was saying that she used to have a, a knapsack and she wrote "Kiss" on it, and I thought that was uh, quite extraordinary. And, and I told her that that was amazing because I used to have the Destroyer album, and I used to rub it against my groin until I ejaculated. <laughs> Which, considering she's a bona fide Christian, she took very well. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> at, the, at, the, at the, the end of the show, I, I put on my robe, she put on her robe, so we looked pretty stunning. So uh, when, when Paul Stanley came down, and he was amazing, he was about six and a half foot tall, he was still wearing, you know, the giant uh, six inch heels. His face had been pulled back so many times, it was like staring at alabaster. It was, it was so incredibly smooth. Um, and he came to the, to the area, he was brought up to the area. Uh, between the two rooms where Marina and I were, he stood in the centre and Marina was on one side, on her dressing room side, and I was on my side, and my dressing room side, we were chatting away, uh, and he was looking from one uh, to the other as he spoke. He spoke to me first um, and was uh, very generous with his praise, and then he turned to Marina, was talking to Marina, and, uh, and we, we talked for a while, and uh, I mentioned that Marina actually had written his uh, name on her satchel, uh, and Marina was kind enough to mention that... Uh, <laughs> as well had uh, a Destroyer album. And what did you do with that, Paul? <laughs> and, uh, and he turned back to me to hear my answer, but then she dragged him away with some, some clever, uh, another aside. And as, as he turned to talk to her, I dry up the air between <laughs> his leather-clad leg and myself, just, just disturbing the air molecules between the two of us in a, in a you know, frisson of pleasure for myself. This is so damn wild. Here I am with Paul Stanley and I'm fucking humping more or less his leg. Uh, while Maria totally held his gaze and kept him from looking around. This was just a stunning moment between the... I love it for that. Yeah, he was so, he was so smitten by uh, Maria. We just totally understand because she's a beautiful woman. And uh, at this point, while they were talking, I turned around and noticed that his minder and his girlfriend were standing there. <laughs> and they'd watched the whole thing. And the faces of the... Because, you know, they're, they're Americans and they're not used to this sort of Australian... This sort of Australian friendship ritual. I explained it to them. <laughs> anyway. Yes, <laughs> sir. I don't do very well when I meet famous people, is the, is the upshot of that. Let's do a song for the people! Mm-hmm. 
moves and you pose. Your mood swings the highs and the lows. What can I say? A man doesn't know, but I will be there when the children fight, when the crowds all run, when you're frightened by the morning light. Don't you know I'll be? on the bass. Uh, David's worked with us several times before on uh, 
He did uh, Tony Abbott, I think, based on Tony Abbott, and a couple of other songs in the old days, which is nice, so the slideshow. And, uh, and just also uh, has come all the way back from Sweden to do this gig tonight. Oh. Where, where he's, been working, he's been working with the lovely Sarah Blasco. Have you heard of Sarah Blasco? So, yeah, 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 quality, quality. You know? And he's got a battery from Ikea. <laughs> that he put together himself. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, uh, Stu Hunter on the piano. <laughs> who, is, uh, who has helped me uh, hew these, uh, these, these broken bits of marble into the beautiful uh, sculptural pieces that we now present before you. Uh, <laughs> wouldn't have been able to do it without Stu. He has a, a Beautiful eye and a beautiful year for, for music, and uh, it's been a pleasure working with him. So, another big round of applause uh, for Stu there. <laughs> Once again, you know, if anyone feels like dancing at any point, or stage diving, <laughs> get the mosh pit going, really get something happening in this tent. To the unicorn you threw You, you myth, you manator You charmer, you dinosaur You doom, doom, doom Got a flood I'm raining down on you And believe you me There's nothing you can do To stop it not coming true
my arms on the floor. <laughs> we just a quick one. We have. Sorry, I hope we haven't done it anymore. And there's a girl down here with some tea. <laughs> all the days take years to pass, but all the weeks seem to sleep inside each month until they wake with false crescendos. Late December, so come fill your cup. Drink to me and mine I'll drink to you and yours God help me find my way Through some open doors I need fresh air right now Not this crowing crowd Of insufferable bores I'll survive Must be the lonely time.